everything is going online now, so are classes. Virtual teaching can be really stressful, so dear fellow teachers, here are four top games you can play with your students to make your online classes and your offline ones less stressful and more engaging. I just want to say that I tried all of these activities with my own students. We had a lot of fun and they're not exclusively for speaking or grammar or vocabulary. You can use them for what is suitable for your class. Let's go! First game is called Here is a Picture. Please, please, please do not take any of these games names seriously. All you have to do is to spare five minutes before class to search for pictures. Let's say you're teaching a grammar lesson about making predictions. After you elicit and explain the future forms, choose some pictures related to your topic, as you can see here, and tell the students, here is a picture, and I want you to make predictions. As I was showing my students the pictures, all students were excited to share their answers and everyone saw something different. Make sure you choose really fun crazy photos to grab all students' attention. So here, we're tackling grammar and speaking. Second game is called I Challenge You. For this game, I use the breakout rooms feature, which I think is available in most of the platforms. If you're doing this activity in an actual classroom, so you just divide them in groups. We had a lesson about transportation, so I started the class with telling the students, I challenge you to name as many as you can of means of transportation. I divided them into groups and added them to their breakout rooms. During that time, the students were working as a team completely focusing on coming up with transportations and since it was an online class they took advantage of that and started googling some transportations. I gave them about seven minutes and I was blown away with the crazy weird transportations that students found online. Some of them shared pictures and we opened a little discussion on their most and least favorite means of transportation and why. You can use the I challenge you activity with literally any topic, like I challenge you to write as many sentences as you can using all the English language tenses, I challenge you to name as many fruits as you can, or you can make it not textbook related and be like, I challenge you to write down all of the students' last names in this class, for example. I mean, you control the level of the difficulty of the challenge depending on your students and your lessons. Third activity is called Find Two Things. This activity is my absolute favorite. Look, in most of our online classes, students sit facing their phones or laptops and come on, let's put ourselves in their shoes. Sometimes it gets really boring. So this is what I did with one of my classes to get the students out of this mood. I told the students that they have 30 seconds to search around their rooms or living rooms or whatever they actually are and find two things or three or just one again you're the boss you control what suits you the best so search for two things starting with the letter b so students all at once got up from their chairs and started treasure hunting in the rooms this can be also super exciting if you are in a classroom so students can go around the class or their bags after the 30 seconds were over my screen was full of bags brushes blankets, badges, and one of the students brought her little sister because she said her name is Bono. It was so fun and I kept repeating it with a different letter each time and I sometimes ask them to talk more about a specific item like where they get it from or was it a gift, what is it made of, how long they've been using it and so on just to let them practice speaking a little bit. Teachers, I 
strongly recommend this game. Students felt active the entire time, showed their favorite possessions, shared their memories, laughed out loud, kept their minds busy and engaged. If there was an award for the best online game ever, this would certainly win. Last activity is called Answers Up. This is the easiest activity. All you have to do is prepare some questions. For example, in one of my classes, I wanted to review some new words we took in a previous class. So I asked all of the students to have an empty notebook or cards and a marker pen or any pen. And I told them to fill in the blank, which in this case, on their notebox or any empty piece of paper they got, but in a heads up style. For example, the question was, what is an Another word for wonderful. So all the students started writing the answer and the first student to hold up the right answer to their forehead gets a point. With larger classes, I tend to give the first three students points, you know, to give all of them a chance. It's a fun game not only to revise previous lessons and words, but also to practice the spelling. Because if a student misspells a word, I usually give them half the point. I also tried it with a grammar and it went really well. So for example, the questions were like, Donna blank been to Japan, or I blank be a nurse in the future. So you can adjust the type of the questions to what helps your lesson. That's a pretty, uh, as you may have noticed, we teachers love to add fun to our classes, but at the same time, we sometimes are just lazy or not that motivated. So these kind of easy activities would save our classes. And as I mentioned earlier, all of these games can be done in our actual classrooms as well, not only the virtual virtual ones with some little modifications. I know how hard teaching can be, but I want to thank you for always looking for fun ways to make your classes amazing and thank you for your time.